Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how durable are paper creed pots. Now, I know a lot of people are very curious because I have seen a lot of messages coming in uh, wherein people are asking whether these uh, pots are durable, whether they get uh, soggy, whether they turn soft, do they break after you add them in water, a lot of questions. Now, I completely agree with your questions because when I initially started making paper creed pots, I was very, very curious to know how it's going to work out uh, because paper creed has been used in a lot of crafts, a lot of stuff. Uh, people even tend to make bricks out of paper crete uh, but it was the first time i thought that i'm going to try something with a paper crete pot now i'm not sure if someone has already done this earlier i'm not quite sure but uh, for me this was a very new thing and i was uh, quite nervous initially that uh, whether the paper crete pot will be able to hold a uh, or it will it work out as a planter because as we all know we tend to water our plants quite often and uh, I was also not very sure whether this is going to work out or not. Now, this is another paper creed pot that I had made uh, uh, this design uh, in order to keep arrangements in this. So I was very curious because we tend to water our plants every now and then and whether it will be durable or not. But to my surprise, it turned out to be really well. And you can see it looks almost like it's made out of concrete. Uh, if you're not going to tell anyone that it's made out of paper creed, nobody's going to believe you. And... Uh, after I made this video, a lot of people did make paper creed pots and they did share. And I must say, uh, a lot of the people are so very creative and they made a very improvised, uh, you know, uh, a paper creed pot by painting it white and it looks absolutely beautiful. But I prefer to keep it very raw and uh, like this very raw look. Uh, because I feel like my succulents tend to look much better in raw pots. But again, it completely depends upon you. If you love to paint them, you can always go ahead and paint them. Uh, I have seen people doing white, grey painting. Not grey, uh, white paint on it. And it looks absolutely beautiful. So, now let me talk a little bit benefits about this paper creed pot. Uh, now, one, the best thing about this is as compared to the concrete pot. For concrete pot, you need to buy sand, you need to buy uh, the cement. In this, you only need to buy the cement. Cement is not very expensive. You can use any kind of cement, Portland cement or any kind of cement. Uh, people have been using white cement. I'm not very sure about white cement. I always tend to use gray cement. Uh, and the best part about this is uh, it's very porous, just like a concrete, terracotta, unglazed clay pots. Uh, these are very porous. They have very fine little holes in them which is not visible to a naked eye but because of those pores uh, there is a good amount of air circulation inside the pot uh, it tends to remain cool because somebody had asked me whether these pots get heated in a summer uh, they would get slightly warm if you expose them to direct sunlight like if you're going to expose them to direct afternoon sunlight of course they will get warm but ideally we do not expose our succulents to direct afternoon sunlight so uh, the chances of it getting warm or getting heated up is very less but yes, if you're going to compare this with plastic pots, then this does not get that heated up. Black plastic pots, they tend to get heated up a lot. They tend to retain moisture as well. But the best part about paper creed pot, now we need to understand uh, when we add soil into it, uh, the soil is content inside. It tends to get contained inside. The upper layer of the soil is exposed to environment, so it tends to dry faster. But the soil inside the pot tends to take a little bit of time for it to dry up. Now that amount is enough for a succulent to have a quick drink. And then the outer portion of this pot, the paper creed pot is again exposed to the environment. So as and when this paper creed pot tends to get dried, it will start pulling out all of the moisture from inside the soil. In this way, if you are from a very humid environment or an environment wherein there is a lot of moisture in the air, this pot is going to work out really well. Just like how a concrete unglazed clay pot or a terracotta pot would work. So when there is moisture inside the pot, it is going to start absorbing. At the same time, it will keep the pot cooler and it will absorb all the excess moisture. Another best thing what I noticed about this is uh, the color change. That is something that I really liked. Right now, it's very light in color, but when it is wet, it tends darker in color. So this is also another indication to show you that the soil is getting dry because as long as there is moisture in the soil, the entire portion is going to be darker in color, like dark gray in color. But as in soon, as in when the uh, pot starts to dry or the soil inside the pot starts to dry, it will start turning white gray in color. That is something that I really like. So if you are from a place which is very humid, 
there is a lot of moisture in the air you belong to a coastal area you have difficulties with your soil drying faster then i think this is one of the option you can go for because it will because this part is all exposed to the environment it gets warm uh, it gets dry faster so it starts pulling out all of the excess moisture in order for because this is made out of paper so it tends to pull out all of the uh, excess moisture it has a combination of paper and cement both of these are very dry in nature so they tend to absorb all the excess moisture now the disadvantage is uh, if you have added very little cement in your paper pulp let's say that your paper pulp is more and your cement is less then yes it will turn soft the more amount of cement you add the more stronger it is going to be so let's say that if you're going to make a pulp if you're going to use two parts of pulp then i would advise either you can use three parts of cement or four parts of cement then it's going to be very very strong another drawback about this is uh, right now i can hold it like this because it's dry it's very light so i can pick it up by the edge but if you have soil and a succulent in it i would advise please do not hold it by the edge if there is weight inside this pot when you're going to pick it up by the edge the edge might break there is a high chance that it might break but there is nothing to be worried what you can do is after you are done with bottom watering or top watering and you want to move the pot just hold the pot in the side like this i'm going to show it to you in some time so you can hold the pot like this or you can hold the pot from beneath like this and trust me guys it's very very lightweight so you do not need to be worried you are not going to uh, damage or injure your wrist because this is very very light so either you can pick it up like this and this is how i usually tend to pick up my uh, succulent uh, when it has been planted with a succulent i tend to hold it like this from the side do not put a lot of pressure otherwise again it might happen to break but it's very very handy it will not break if you're just going to keep in one place and water it from above and leave it as it is it's going to do its work the only thing is like if you're going to keep moving it here and there and if you're going to put a lot of pressure on it then there is a chance that it might break now this is with any pot guys whether this you might have even handled a uh, glass terrariums as well you know how glass terrariums are the glass is very very thin if you're going to put a lot of pressure the glass will break it is somewhat like that i'm going to do a quick demonstration and i'm going to show it to you uh, when i water this now today you will be able to see how bottom watering tends to work because there is no soil so you will be able to see how the water starts to enter in so let me quickly fill this up with water so we are filled with water now i'm just going to take the pot and you will be able to see how bottom watering tends to work you can see this now this is how bottom watering also tends to work the water starts coming in and you can see a lot of bubbling happening because remember as i said there are a lot of small air pockets in this which allows the air circulation inside the pot uh, keeps the pot very cool from inside and this is how it tends to work and you can see this is how the bottom watering tends to work it usually starts from beneath and then the water slowly starts coming up through the capillary action so this is how it is let me show it to you the sound is little changed because it's wet but you can see it's not soggy it's not soggy at all now i'm going to completely drench it in water and as you can see while i'm doing this you can see the water immediately starts getting absorbed because it's made out of paper and cement it's a very very dry material i'm going to add a little bit more into it and there we go we have it completely in water so this is the reason why uh, when the pot is very heavy i would advise you to hold it from the side there is nothing much to be worried when you're holding it from the side do not or you can hold it from beneath but in case if there is water coming out you do not want to dirty your hands so you can just hold it in the side like this and just pick up your pot after you're done with bottom watering so you can see it's pretty simple it is not going to get soggy only thing that you have to be careful when it is wet you do not want to hold it from the side and uh, the bottoms as well you can see it looks absolutely fantastic it's not soggy probably it might turn slightly soft but it is it's not very soft because i had added little bit of cement uh, the ratio of cement was not a lot but you can see it's not very soft it's not soggy uh, it is going to work out really well for your uh, succulents it's going to absorb all the excess moisture and you can see this it tends to absorb the moisture easily it does not even look like it's made out of paper crete pot it's still very stiff because it has cemented that it has got cured but you need to cure it guys if you're going to 
just take it out within three days and if you're going to do it it will definitely break you have to let the cement cure i let it cure uh, in shade for one week and after that i put it out in direct afternoon sunlight for three weeks and every day every alternate day in those three weeks i tend to uh, mist little bit water to make it little bit more stronger but this is how it tends to work out uh, you can see the water is also passing through it and it's pretty durable there is nothing that you have to be worried the only thing that i'm just worried about is the edges because as and when the pot uh, is wet uh, if you're going to hold it by the edge there is a chance that it's going to break but other than that it is not going to break it works out really well it is not uh, something that is going to break off or it's not going to turn like real soft wherein it starts breaking in your hand it is going to work out really well uh, let me keep this aside as i said you have to just lift it by now i can hold it by the edge because there is not much soil in it there's not much weight but when there is soil you have to hold it by the hand like this so i'm going to keep this aside Now this is another paper crete pot. I watered it probably in the morning because the succulent was getting dehydrated. Uh, I don't want to drop the stone. This is also made out of paper crete. It was just watered in the morning, but I'm going to show it to you once again. And I just leave it in this uh, because there is a succulent in this. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Now when you're going to lift this pot, you have to just hold it over here and then just lift it up. It's not going to have any issues like this. It was just watered in the morning. But if I'm going to hold it by the edge because of the rock, the soil, the succulent, because if I'm going to hold it at the edge, it will definitely break. So all I have to do is just put it into the water. Once it's done with bottom watering, then just lift it up. Now, if you feel that this is very messy, then you do not need to do bottom watering. You can just do top watering. It's going to work out the same way. I'll quickly show you the top watering as well. So here is another pot. Uh, again, this was also uh, made through. This is a paper crete pot as well. Uh, if you can see, at times it becomes a little difficult to understand which is a paper crete pot and which is a regular concrete pot because I do have concrete pots of the same design. I will show it to you in a while. Now, uh, these are also made out of paper crete uh, with the excess paper crete that is left over. These are very, very light. I don't know if you can hear the sound. So these are also made out of paper crete. I like to keep the small pieces as decor rather than just throwing off the excess paper crete. I tend to make a small little arrange, uh, you know, these uh, decor pieces out of paper crete. So these were made out of paper crete as well. You will be able to make out with the texture on this. As you can see, so these were made out of paper crete as well. And the pot itself is made out of paper crete. I'm going to show it to you by watering it from above. So you can even do top watering like this. Uh, I usually use these uh, decor pieces as my uh, watering, uh, I, I don't know if you can call it as a bait. Uh, so I use them as uh, the watering container. So I just water it. Now this is a top watering that I'm doing and you can see the color of the paper crete will also start to change. Uh, the color is very light right now, you can see this. And the water has already started to pass through the drain hole. Now you can see the color of this pot will also start turning a little darker in color as and when there is moisture inside the pot. Let me add some more water. So now we have added water. Now, as I said, if you are doing this in a tray or if you're doing it anywhere and then you decide you want to move the pot, hold it by the side. Now we have three succulents with some decor piece as well as we have our uh, we have completely done a, a top watering you can see the water has started to pass through the drain hole and you can see how durable this pot is uh, i'm holding it from the side do not hold it and you can also see the color is also starting to change slowly because there is moisture inside the pot you will be able to see it over here uh, you can see how soon the color is uh, changing from a light to dark gray in color and this is how it starts to and now when the pot is going to lose all the moisture the color of this pot will again change to the light color so this is how after the watering is done i lift it up with both my hands in the side if you want you can even hold it from beneath uh, but usually there is a lot of water that comes out you do not want to dirty your hands so it's always better to hold it from the side so we are done with watering for this guy as well so as you can see it's pretty simple i'm going to show you some more of my pots now this is pretty heavy but these are all of my small uh, 
paper creed pots you can see this is where it got damaged because i went to lift it up by mistake i forgot because at times i get confused whether this is a concrete pot or it's a paper creed pot and you can see it broke because i held it by the edge but these are all now most of these are almost a year and a half old uh, they have been getting watered the same way how i tend to water uh, my other succulents sometimes i do a top watering sometimes i do a bottom watering i will be doing a bottom watering in some time that's why i have used a tray so these are all again paper creed pots uh, which have been doing quite well and you can see the succulents are also quite happy in this kind of a material it's not that they are going to have issues you can see all of my succulents are very healthy slightly under watered because as you know that everything is getting dried up much faster over here but they are still doing quite well so as i said that i'm going to show you my concrete pot as well now this is my original concrete pot which is made out of uh, cement and sand so this is the concrete pot now these pots i can hold it by the edge because they are made out of concrete they have been cured for a very long time and they are very and this is my paper creed pot i don't know if you can see it so you can see they almost resemble same the only thing that the paper creed pots have these more of air pockets but they look very very similar so you can see both of them tend to look so much similar the only thing is that because you know paper creek pots are handmade uh, these are made with uh, containers like two different containers so that's why the edges are much more uh, smoother and after sanding they become even more smoother i haven't uh, used a sandpaper on this i just let them because i kind of like the raw look for my pots so i just don't use a sandpaper and this is the uh, concrete pot you can see they look very similar uh the only thing is that uh, you will find a lot of these uh, holes because that's because of the paper creed so you can see both are very similar these are all of my pots and they look amazing they do really really well so i really love paper creed pots if you want to try them you can definitely try them as i said just increase the amount of uh, cement in order to make them even more stronger now these are some more of my uh, paper creed pots now guys these are been here for almost 3 weeks i'm sure you might have seen them these are getting cured uh, now if you are a beginner i would say do not go for very thin edges because i know how to handle these if you're going to make them very thin they will get they will break because you are just starting off with them uh, you need to be extremely careful especially with the ones that have really thin edges like this because i have made this uh, as per my uh, requirement but what i would suggest is if you just starting off then don't make it so thin uh, these are being cured for almost 3 weeks now it's going to take a lot of time and i don't know if you will be able to hear the sound you can see how uh, strong they are it's going to take a while for them i'm going to keep them for another week and i keep misting them every uh alternate day for them to get cured so they have been here for almost 3 weeks so i usually let them cure slowly and uh, for one week they were in shade and after that for 3 weeks they are going to be out in sun so it's a little longer process always remember the slower it takes time for it to cure the much more stronger it's going to be so i tend to keep misting them and i keep them out in sun and then after a week i will use them for my succulents so guys i hope that this video was helpful to you if it was please hit the like button If you're new to my channel please consider subscribing to it until then take care stay safe and keep propagating